morning and welcome to the pastor's porch here at Parsons Gulch for Sunday morning worship on this seventh day of June 2020. We are so glad that you are all with us. Today we recommit ourselves to living Pentecost lives, listening to the words of youth, sharing the dreams of elders, inviting new languages, some digital, to share our good news. We are going to have Holy Communion in our online live stream worship this morning. So hopefully, or you still have time, you will want to prepare a slice or a small loaf of any kind of bread to share, maybe have some crackers and a cup or small cups of juice, your juice of choice or wine with or without alcohol. Set the elements in your living room or kitchen, wherever you are, or your porch, <laughs> wherever you are worshiping electronically with our faith community. We are all here together. You can place a glove and a mask as we have on your table symbolically as well. And perhaps you want to put everything on a a, a lovely cloth or fabric that reminds you of a special time or a person. You can even light a candle or place a flower or my favorite, and I wish we had, I had thought of this sooner, a photograph of someone that you wish to bring into the circle of faith beside the bread and the cup. We thank you for doing that. We have Chris Claxton and Taylor O'Donnell yes. uh, with us electronically with their amazing music this morning. So we are grateful to them and for them. And we hope you'll join us after worship for a time of fellowship. Bring a cup of coffee and uh, we'll uh, post the Zoom link um, in the uh, comment feed on our, on our Facebook Live and hope all of you will be able to join us for a cup of coffee and some uh, check-in after worship today. Okay. Let's be together in worship. Let's join together as we call ourselves to worship. In the midst of the world's chaos, we gather across the miles when our minds are overwhelmed with what we see. We come to you to find hope. When our hearts are heavy with fear, with worry, with sorrow. We come to you to find strength. As we long for community in a world that is torn apart, we come to you to find love. Come, people of God, in this moment beyond time and space. Let us find courage, hope, strength, and love 
as we worship and pray together. Our first hymn is, What is This Place?
Thank you so much, Taylor, for that beautiful, beautiful music. I will gladly do your will. Our scripture lesson for this morning is taken from the book of Genesis, right at the beginning. Chapter 1, all the way to chapter 2, verse 4a. It's the first creation story. Let us listen for the word of God. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep. 
while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so, God called the dome sky. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be signs for the seasons and for the days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God gave them the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters of the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth and of every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. 
These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. Here ends the reading of the lesson. May God bless our reading, hearing, and understanding of these words. Yesterday, there was a march, a protest march, right here in Kittery. Just like in cities and towns across the country and around the world, there was a march. A march protesting the continuing violence on our black and brown brothers and sisters. And the systemic racism that continues to burden communities of color in our nation and burdens our nation. Young people in Kittery and Portsmouth and across the sea coast gathered together to plan and lead a march for justice from the parking lot at Trape Academy to Market Square. And I was uh, part of that, sort of a, I don't know if a chaperone is the right word, but I was called a peacekeeper, and I was just kind of watching out for, for the walkers and um, trying to be a part of it and stay out of the way. And I was thinking there would be maybe 100 or 200 people. And on Facebook it said there were 400 that were going and 1,000 that were interested. And when the, the showers held off, the thunderstorms went around us, it ended up there were around 1,000 people in Market Square, not to mention the parade of cars that was going through. I was proud, humbled to walk with them, maybe even a little bit hopeful. Because even though these things go on and on and happen again and again, it feels like there just might be something different this time. Last week on my Facebook feed there was a, um, I guess it's a poem, um, that was uh, by Leslie Dwight, and um, I'm going to share it with you today. It's short. It talks about the place that we are in, the time that we are in. What if 2020 isn't canceled? What if 2020 is the year we've been waiting for? A year so uncomfortable, so painful, so scary, so raw, that it finally forces us to grow. A year that screams so loud, finally awakening us from our ignorant slumber. A year we finally accept the need for change. Declare change, work for change, become the change. A year we finally band together instead of pushing each other further apart. 2020 isn't canceled, but rather the most important year of them all. It seems like this time there is movement. Even though Many of us have recognized that we need to do better. This time, something's different. And there's unfinished work. We have work to do. We have to start somewhere. We have to start sometime. Maybe even today. Maybe even now. So what might this first creation story in our Bible have to say to us about race and racism? This was written around the time of the Babylonian exile, around the 8th century before the Common Era. Scholars believe that it was really meant to counter Mesopotamian, Mesopotamian, what was the one you Don't were stumbling over not, last week? Mesopotamian creation stories. And one of them was the Enuma Elish, the Babylonian creation story. And you know that one, right? Starring Marduk, the patron deity of Babylon, and Apsu, and Mumu Tiamat. 
Marduk, Apsu, Mumu Tiamat. You know that one, right? Oh, yes. So, and there actually are parallels between the Babylonian and the, um, the Hebrew, the, the um, accounts of the creation. And in the Mesopotamian story, creation is the result of a cosmic struggle among the gods. And earth is really the, sort of the battlefield. And all the destruction. And that's, that's what we get. Genesis presents everything coming about as the act or word of God. God speaks light, and there is light. God speaks, let there be life, and there is life. Now, I do not believe that this is a scientific account of the creation, although you can get there from this first one anyway. But this is really a theological statement. A theological account. It sh assures people who have been displaced in time and space that God is more powerful, more present than the chaos that has overtaken them. God is more powerful than the chaos that has overtaken them. And isn't that good news for us in these days? Isn't that good for us to hear? Because creation, what is new, what is good, that which gives life, occurs not out of nothing, but out of chaos. Out of chaos. And this story is not really about how things came to be. It's really not about that at all. It's a story about God and about our relationship with God. It's about the nature of God. It's about God as a creator of a magnificent and diverse and orderly universe that sometimes seems, at least to my perspective, to be just a little bit out of whack. It tells us that nothing, not exile, not loneliness, not illness, not unemployment, not chaos, not confusion, not the pandemics of racism or coronavirus can separate us from God our Creator. And it also talks about the place of human beings. And I'm going to reread a part of that. It's going to make Linda a little bit nervous because it was a long reading to start with. Let us make humankind, literally earthlings, adams, things of the dirt. Let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. Let us make them. God plural, in our image. Did you catch that part? Our sacred text acknowledges from the very start that there is diversity. Not only among us creatures, but among the Creator. It says that we are created in the image of God. And when it says that, it's less a statement of how we look, but more about how we are to act. It says we are given dominion, not domination, not exploitation, not power over, but power with. That we are caretakers and stewards and partners. That we are all part of a larger whole. That we are created to be in relationship. That we exist in and for relationship. With God, with creation, with one another. We are at our core social beings. And 
Even in these days of social distancing, we hardcore introverts are craving connection. At the march yesterday, there was a sign there that um, I had to laugh at because um, I want to get one for myself. It, it says, it's got to be bad for the introverts to come out. It's got to be bad for the introverts to come out. This is not going away overnight. It's not going to go away because we've marched enough or sung enough. But I do believe the time has come. I believe the time has come for us to have the hard conversations. I believe the time has come for us to go to those uncomfortable places. I believe the time has come for us to talk. The bottom line is that racism and sexism and homophobia and nationalism that any system of belief that sets us apart from or says we are better than, that says the other is less than or gives us power over another, any system of belief that does any of that, I believe is sin. And I use that word advisedly because in the United Church of Christ we really don't talk about sin. I believe that racism is a denial of the humanity of others. A denial of our human nature. A denial of that divine call to be in relationship with others, with all people, with all things. Racism ignores the fact that we are all God's creatures, all created in the image of God. Diverse, beautiful, complex creatures and creators. And Paul says that when that we are one, that when one part suffers, we all suffer. This is work we have to do. One of the other scriptures assigned for this day is, is Matthew 28. Uh, verses 16 to 20, but I'm just going to pick a couple out of there. It's, it's, it's Jesus' great commission. We all know this. Jesus' final words to his disciples in Matthew's Gospel. Go, he says, and make disciples of all nations, and I will be with you to the end of the age. Go and make disciples. Don't stop at national borders. Don't stop at race and clan. Don't stop when it starts to get uncomfortable. Just go. Make disciples. Be in relationship. Talk. Listen to their story. Listen to their story. Listen to their story. And then tell your story. Be creators of a world of peace and justice for all God's people. And I will be with you to the end of the age. That's the promise we have. There is unfinished work to do. It is our work to do. And there's no time to waste. It's 2020. 2020. Maybe this time something's different. God, I hope so. Amen. to be in a time of prayer and to share your, your concerns for situations and people uh, that you are holding in your hearts, to share some joys you may have. You can go ahead and um, write in the, the Facebook thread and 
I will do my best to include all that are written, but know that there are many people reading this as well. And they are lifting up your loved ones too. So let's be together in prayer. Holy God, as this past week has unfolded in protests surrounding the death of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and others have become intense and real and taken place in our own communities. We come before you feeling sad, angry, wondering how to bring about change, sometimes feeling hopeless and sometimes hopeful. Be with us in every emotion as we respond in prayer, with walks, marches, carrying signs, being peaceful, shedding tears. The world is not as you want it to be at the moment, O oh God, so empower us with wisdom and energy and courage to do what needs to be done to bring about racial justice for our communities our country, our brothers and sisters of every color in our world. May we speak to one another, may we listen and not judge, may we show empathy and compassion, and may our words and our actions reflect your love and your hope for what needs to happen next as we create a system where when black lives matter, then all lives matter. We are all God's creatures. Help us to be unafraid and to share the gospel where and as it is needed with our voices, our hands, and our feet. Oh God, we are still living with a pandemic 12 weeks later. And we pray, continue to pray for healing, for a vaccine, for patience, for understanding when there are restrictions, for a time soon when we can be with family and friends, but only when it is safe, oh God, only when it is safe. In our church, families, and in our friends and family in our world, we lift up these prayers for these people. We give thanks for Pam Precourt's mother who is doing better and has recently come home after being ill. We pray for Bill Hodgson, who is in the hospital and whose family is rightly worried. We give thanks that Charlotte is doing better. We pray for David Gregg and his family as he fights a cancer that is spreading. We pray for a better world for Diane's grandchildren and everyone's grandchildren during these times. We have two open and affirming congregations here. We want to celebrate Pride Month, and we will be doing that, so thank you for that. We pray for Lois's middle son as he teaches his daughters this summer, and that he finds a way to explain what is happening all around them. We pray for Mark Green and Kathy Stewart, who is battling cancer. And now we lift up in this time of silence our prayers for our prayers for our world and people, those we know and those we don't. Hear our prayers, O oh God. me, bro. 
And now I invite you to offer yourselves to God and before God this morning. There are many ways to do this. If you would like to do this financially, to contribute to your churches, we invite you to do that. Think of how you are offering yourself to God as you work and pray during this time in our country, in our world. What can you offer? I invite you to think about that as we listen to our offering music this morning. to God. You, you shower us, us with many, many blessings, blessings, even in these uncertain times, O oh God. Accept all the gifts we bring to our families, our neighbors, and our communities. Help us to follow you joyfully, faithfully, boldly, that we might share the blessing of your saving grace and reconciling love with everyone we meet. Amen. together. This morning you were invited for Holy Communion in the body of Christ. The body of Christ is not the loaf of bread you see on my plate or on your screen. The body of Christ is not even the bread on your table. The body of Christ is us as we are strengthened by sharing together this meal of hope and grace and presence. The parables on the table this morning include a mask and a glove, symbols of care for the body of Christ. As Jesus might have said, 
The realm of God is like a mask of compassion on the bread of heaven. And a gloved hand lifting the cup of blessing so that all are served and safe. We pause to honor with tender memory the holy table in our church homes and to consecrate with love for all God's children these many holy tables in our home churches. We are the body of Christ dispersed and gathered at the same time, which is always true, though we do not always see it. <clears throat> Como granos que han hecho el mismo pan, como notas que te han un cantar, como gotas de agua que se funden en el mar, los cristianos un cuerpo formarán. Like the grains that become one loaf of bread. Like the notes that are woven into song. Like the droplets of water that are blended in the sea. We as Christians one body shall become. In your many kitchens and living rooms, rest your hands lightly upon these elements, which we set aside today to be a sacrament. Let us ask for God's blessing upon them and us, and upon all those who are in our prayers this morning as we pray together. Gentle, Gentle host. Rest upon us as you rested upon water and light, earth and creatures, human beings, all in your image, and holy Sabbath. Send your spirit of life and love, power and blessing upon your children who are staying at home, so that this bread may be broken and gathered in love, and this cup poured out to give hope to all. Risen Christ, live in us, that we may live in you. Breathe in us, that we may breathe in you. We remember the Creator blessed all creatures and all human beings with plants of the ground and fruit of the trees. We remember Sarah's hospitality to angels, manna in the wilderness, oil that never gave out, and the psalmist speaking down through the ages, taste and see that God is good. We remember. We remember a 12-year-old at a Passover in Jerusalem, a meal cooked by Peter's mother-in-law, a small boy's lunch, Zacchaeus's feast, Martha's one-dish hospitality, a story about a fatted calf and dancing, Another Jerusalem Passover, broken bread in Emmaus, and a fish on the beach. We remember. We remember communal dining inspired by the Holy Spirit. Peter's unkosher dream that meant all God's children are accepted. Paul's communion on a sinking ship and a vision of the fruit trees in the new Jerusalem. We remember. Our tables are as various as these, and they are truly the meal of grace, blessed by Creator, Christ, and indwelling Spirit. Let us at our many tables receive the gift of God, the bread of heaven. We become the body of Christ and the bread we share. Let us in our many places receive the gift of God, the cup of blessing. 
We are one in Christ in the cup that we share. In thanksgiving for this meal of grace, rejoicing that in the holy dispersion of virtual worship, we claim the risen Christ's love is not limited by buildings made with human hands, nor contained in human ceremonies. So let us pray. O Holy One, our tongues have tasted the good news, and our lives are filled with the spirit that hovered over creation and blew fresh hope on Pentecost. Creator, open our hearts. Word, speak peace to our voices, to all the people in the hot spots and hurts of the world. As we journey masked through our lonely or dangerous or over busy day, Holy Spirit, fill us with this blessing that is good. Amen. So our closing hymn is Wash, O God, Your Sons and Daughters. And Chris is playing it, and Taylor is singing alongside. And once we heard Taylor sing it, we decided there was no need for us to sing it. So we are just going to have Taylor sing it for you. You're free to sing along at home. <laughs> Now, Holy One, go with us wherever you may lead us. Guide us through the wilderness. Protect us from the storm. Bring us home rejoicing at the wonders you have shown us. Bring us home rejoicing once again unto our doors. Amen. Amen.
We'll see you for coffee hour and have a wonderful week and we will also see you next Sunday. Thank you everyone.